So competing here was uh, pretty intense. There is a lot of racing going on within these two days. The downriver race is extremely exhausting. And the slalom cross, I really like the slalom cross. It's a sick rapid for a slalom cross, some really technical moves. It's not just about sprinting, but it's all about catching the lines and having a good tactics. So I really enjoyed that part of the game. Our idea actually was to invite mostly female athletes because in all festivals and all kayaking competitions around the world, we feel that the focus is more on the male athlete. But Meghale being like a matriarchal society, we wanted to break that trend, set a new example and try and encourage more women to get into paddle sports. So it's, it's crazy to find out that the festival was supposed to be um, just for women, like to invite more women to this festival. And it's um, um, so amazing to see that because we definitely need more women in the sport. Unfortunately, given the timing and, uh, and the schedules, that was not entirely possible. We managed to get about five uh, women athletes from uh, all over the world and from India. And we had some budget left over, so we just used that to invite a few international male athletes as well, who are in slalom and who are competing in extreme slalom competitions around the world, so that they can come here and actually demonstrate like uh, their skill and their talent and, and basically just showcase, you know, what extreme slalom or what slalom or technical kayaking is all about. And one of the big uh, reasons that we organize uh, festivals like this is that these local paddlers can see the professionalism of all these world-class athletes coming in and be inspired by them. See how they are performing on the river and even what they do off the river, the way that they keep themselves fit, the, the way that they train, you know, just the way that they think about like uh, traveling to a race or to a different location. So all of that uh, needs to like be imbibed by the local paddlers. Sure, it raises the standard for them. So then now they can see like uh, what really, really top kayaking is about, you know, and, and through mixing with them and Pedaling with them, they are learning so much. Well, this, this year we got government support, so it's really put a different outlook on the event and with the, with the prize money and increased budget, so this has attracted much more people and and especially the public. And we were kind of happy to hear that. So because it's the first time that a government has come forward without too much of convincing and said like, here's like a sizable budget. I think it's really cool to see such really big event happening in, in India and, and bringing like really high quality of, of, of racing into countries where we never had opportunities to go for races. They definitely put on a, a cool course here uh, with the higher water. It was really fun to, to race on that. Having been to India before for whitewater races, I had kind of an idea what to expect. At the same time, you never know exactly. And I was surprised in a good way. Great turnout from athletes, good local people here, great organization. Pretty much everything went quite flawlessly. And what I, as a kayaker, care most about, the race course itself was great. Here we are, Megalala Kayaking Festival 2022. Just got my bib, ready to race, go for it, let's go.
time. Hard racing out here. Lots of strong forward stroke needed to be fast. Some really, really fast races out here. Me too. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> the race format was really interesting because it was combining a bit of the extreme kayaking world and the new disciplines. There were a bunch of challenges. The gates were set pretty hard. On the extreme slalom, you had to like go left and then right and like play with some of the boulders and like with the hole. And the hole was actually pretty sticky. So I definitely think it was like a challenging, like they set the gates, the gates pretty challenging. When we arrived, there was no possibility to really train because there was some dam release sometimes in the morning sometimes in the evening but you never knew how much water for how long uh, but luckily for the race uh, the arrangements were made and and there was water and and it was good to go but training was definitely uh, not not ideal one of the good things uh, for this river to be dam controlled was that during the days of the festival we could tell them like how much flow we want so and the flows remained consistent throughout the day so for all the athletes, that was uh, that was good. It was a fair competition. Like two gates, we have to do both. And then should we, if, if everyone makes a gate, should we keep it for one way or not? Right? Because this gate is not the same full. So the guy that got the uh, So we're going to do two races in extreme slalom, like an individual time trial, where everybody is going to go down the course one by one, and the same take the same extreme slalom gates. That's going to be used to establish the seeding for the extreme slalom cross where four people are going to race at one time. It's going to be quite hard to get all the gates, but hopefully we'll make it and it's going to be a nice battle and everyone will be happy and super proud of what they do. I'll try to do like uh, much better than yesterday. So yeah, I'm fired up. The course down here today on this river is uh, super challenging. It's more about uh, not racing, making the smooth line, making the eddy, making the gate, and uh, getting to the bottom safely pretty much. You know, it's like everything in life you need to learn and when you learn you do mistakes and, and that's that's really fine with me. I think overall it was it was a really good event and, and I think the next one will only be better because you learn from the previous experience. So I'm excited to potentially go back to India and race. Uh, we felt a lot of pressure to deliver, but uh, we know what we are doing and uh, you know, we, we, we are very happy to say that we 
that as as far as my expectation is concerned we delivered as per you know uh, what what we thought we could deliver and we and just giving myself a pat on the back i think we did a great job uh, especially my team i'm so happy that we i have a team like that it's been quite an amazing experience i'm like um really thankful that i i got to see part of it here in megalaya then it was really cool to see villagers coming to the race and cheering on us and being really happy to have the kayaking festival there and have like younger kids that don't necessarily paddle ask you if they can they can try it out and and helping you carry the boats and they wanted to be involved and and it was really cool to to have that very positive spirit to my european friends it's honestly a sick place here the rivers are great and If you come here make sure to bring some old life vests, price skirts, whatever you have because the kids here are super stoked to get on the river. They just don't have the opportunity because it's pretty hard to get kayaking gear here. So make sure to bring something extra, something spare. Even if it's broken, they're going to fix it. And come here, it's a nice place. I wish I could see like a local community which cares about the rivers and their protection, which has like local knowledge because local knowledge is always the best. who can tell you about certain seasons water levels predictions stuff like that that's definitely something which would make megalaya an even better destination for foreign kayakers to come by and check out since at the moment it's kind of you arrive and do it figure out on your on your own and i truly do believe that having a local community can only benefit the sport the nature and the place itself this place is a is is a gold mine as far as uh, rivers are concerned right I feel that this place has the potential to be like the chili of of the east. It has some really excellent rivers, you know, some classic descents like the Kinchi, Kopoli, the Lower Umtro, the Umrao, which are all within like 2 to 6 hours drivable distance from Shillong. And also Shillong has like a very rich and vibrant culture. The people are different, the food is great, the music scene is amazing. I just really want to go back and and run them again and also run other rivers like uh I think there is a bit of a drive in between the locations but it's always very worth it so I would love to go back with with more time I'm coming from a really touristic place in the Alps and we did some big mistakes in developing our tourism and I would like to help you to not make the same ones your biggest gem your biggest um gift you have here it's your nature it's the forest it's the rivers that's what is going to attract tourists and that's what is going to help grow in your country no tourists and no kayakers are going to ever going to come here if the rivers are damp and if, if there is no more water in the river and same for other tourists they're not going to come here if there is no more forest so that's a big advice for me we did many mistakes in europe and i you guys haven't done them yet but that's your chance to grow and live from tourism Um, dois, três e...